Here we are together again on the radio. We appreciate your patronage. Look at this story from Florida. This is from abcnews.com. I would use our own website, westwoodone.com, but they don't have any information like this on there. News. We don't need no stinking news. We're America's biggest radio network. Here's the story. After debating the heartache of divorce, shacking up for convenience, and romantics who, quote, still believe in love, lawmakers have voted to let judges reduce or eliminate alimony when the person receiving it moves in with someone else. This bill is more like a country western song than good legislation, complained Republican State Representative Nancy Duterte. After the 68 to 44 House vote, this again is in Florida. Judges generally end alimony when the recipient remarries. But courts in Florida have disagreed about what to do about people who, in the words of one lawmaker, take themselves right up to the line of remarry by moving in with someone else. Some lawmakers argued it doesn't make sense. The money might even go to support the person who replaced the old spouse. And that's true. When your ex-bitch moves in with somebody else, you shouldn't be paying the rent. A matter if they're married. Republican Representative Dennis Baxley, meow, says it's a bad enough heartache when someone you love leaves many times for another person. To be asked to support this ex-mate's new girlfriend or boyfriend, that is really adding insult to injury. Well, I agree with him there. Several members, almost all women, said they thought the bill was unfair to women who have given a significant part of their lives to husbands who then walk out on them. This is an anti-woman bill, griped Democratic Representative Eleanor Sobel. Alimony should be based on what someone has contributed to the marriage. No, 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 dear. That's what community property is. That's what community property is. When we split up the property, unless there's a prenup, each person gets 50-50. 50% of what they contributed. 50% of what remains. That's what they get. Alimony is not community property. It's not the same thing. It's really vagina money. It is an annuity paid out on the past use of a vagina. It has nothing to do with what someone contributed during the marriage. Nothing. Nothing. It says here, Maine, most other states have already dealt with this issue. Some have laws ending alimony when the ex-spouse lives with anyone new. And many states authorize judges to end or modify the payment, said Mary Frances Lyle, chair of the Vagina Money Committee of the Family Law Association. The American Bar Association. In some states, alimony payments can even be ended when a divorcee has a platonic roommate, she said. Democratic... Uh, here, and here, this is what women always revert to in these conversations. Let's go back to the emotionalism. Democratic Representative Audrey Gibson found all the talk of money more than a little unromantic. Not everyone is looking for the money. Some people still do believe in love, she said. Oh, Give me a break. You've got to be kidding me. The measure now goes to the Florida Senate. Uh, you know what? First of all, we keep hearing about how women are equal and women are working, what have you. Well, I, I think that alimony should be decided before you get married in a prenuptial agreement. If alimony is to be paid, it should be determined at that time how much, what percentage of the husband's income will go to alimony. And uh, one of the good things about that is if the two people disagree, then they won't get married in the first place. And we won't have them in court arguing about this stuff. It should be determined in advance. If there is no... See, this is the way it should be done. If there is no alimony agreement, there should be no alimony. At all. At all. We need to force couples to talk about this before they get married 
so they can find out who they're marrying and decide if that's the person they really want to be with. They should debate this with an attorney and the other person present before they get married. That's why I've said everybody getting married should have a prenuptial agreement. Everybody. These things should be determined in advance. No woman should be able to move in with somebody else and continue getting alimony. And honestly, alimony is proof positive. What I always say, women love to say they don't need men. They don't need men. Here is evidence that they need us. They are hooked on us like a junkie is hooked on heroin. They need us. Tie the rubber hose around her arm. She needs a man. She needs a man to pay for everything. Women love to say they don't need men. Then they demand alimony, child support. They sue us for more and more and more and more. What's uh, what's Puffy Combs paying? Twenty one thousand a month? Is it something like that in child support? Yeah, women don't need a man. Sure, they don't. You need us like you like like your goddamn crack horse for Christ's sake. You need us. All you women who say you don't need us, you do. You need us. And you take from us. And you take as much as you can get from us. All the while saying you don't need us. And you won't make us dinner. And you won't fold our socks. And you won't have sex with us. And you won't lose 50 pounds. Yeah, you don't need us. find out how much you we, you need us when we leave. We keep hearing that statistic that says that a man's standard of living goes up after a divorce and a woman's standard of living goes down. You bet it does. Because women need us like a heroin addict needs heroin. They need us. We pay for everything. We don't pay for 100% of everything 100% of the time, but we pay a lot more than you do, girls. You need us. That's why you're constantly trying to get us to sign contracts to marry you. Because you need us. I'm not saying you need us emotionally. You need us, you know, in a love sense. No, no. You need our money. Are there lazy, good-for-nothing slobs who sit on the couch all day married to women who work? There are some. The fat and fugly, that's who they marry. They marry good-for-nothing spouses. At least they've got a man around. But um, I must say that anyone who's not fat and fugly generally gets married to somebody who makes more than they do. And the plan is to take as much as they can while they can. All the while saying they don't need us. I think they're mistaken. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-866. I think you're a sick bastard. Yes, I am, dear. But that's why they give me the big bucks. It's the Tom Likas Show. The Tom Likas Show. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Rick on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. How you doing, Tom? Okay. Oh, I'm about uh, three, like, I think last time I counted was $320,000 in the hole. You on paid one, that to one bitch? On the one night stand uh, that I was told not to, that she didn't want to see anything, she didn't want to know anything about me, and... Um, Oh, about two years later, I got a call from the DA, showed up to court, my deal, uh, been pending for 10 years, and I'm 300, 300 something, easy. Wow. What's this done to your credit rating? Um, God bless me, man, that I've gotten over it. I'm done. Uh, I got a good job, great job, making well over six figures, uh, that's taken care of. She was counting on that. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, uh... Yeah, I love when they say they don't need us. Don't need us, man. Don't, I don't need, need us, you. don't need us. And when it comes to money... Uh, yeah, they need us. They do. They need us badly. And it's I, I heard some guy earlier today on on a different uh, talk radio, and he was... Uh, the guy wanted to kill himself over something like this. Mm-hmm. And uh, when I first started going through this, I, I wanted to check out. I was done, and it just uh, didn't happen. It didn't yeah. happen, and got my life back together and so uh, everything's great now well, good for but you I, I, I try not to push it I uh, have a huge file and um, one day I will show the mom and say here this is what you've done now you're done paying how old is the kid no I'm not done paying well, I, thought, I, I thought you said I you were done I don't think about it you're done thinking about I'm it I'm done thinking about it I don't think about it I move on I look at it as another bill unbelievable and it, it's a bad, it's a bad rap for us. 
not fair. Yeah. It's not fair. I think that if you, I, I think if if you uh, if they say that they want a kid, they should be able to support it. That's right. Um, if we don't have a say so, then we shouldn't be involved in raising it, and we shouldn't be involved in the finances. It's a decision they made, and. Um, they should deal with it. Yeah. Well, I mean, now you have sperm donors being chased for... Uh, I've heard. Care. I've heard. Uh, any man who donates sperm is a complete idiot. Here's the other one. If and I've, I've heard you talk about it before, that if you go to court and your son is to go to court and you don't show up, you're guilty. If they later on go back and do a DNA test and find out that it is your kid, it doesn't matter. You didn't show up to court, you're guilty. And in California... Um, <laughs> any uh, have you ever been subpoenaed to testify uh, at a lawsuit or a criminal trial or anything like that? No. Have you ever gotten papers? No. Okay, uh, there's a process server every time that they like. For example, I've gotten divorced, had to serve papers. Uh, I have been sued in frivolous lawsuits. Um, I had to be served with the pounds of paper, and they had to have proof of service, it's called. They had to prove that I was served with the papers, and then I show up in court. The one and only lawsuit where they don't have to prove they served you is for child support. They can send you uh, a, a, a notice at what is called your last known address. And do, you, right. and do you know what women do on the advice of their attorneys? They send it. That, no, but they don't. They don't. They don't make any effort to find out where you are now. Oh, that's right. The DA. The wherever DA you had sex with them, that tag you're in. That's where they send the notice. You're done. Usually, you've moved. You've sold your house, or uh, uh, someone else rented the apartment. Uh, the letter goes to that apartment. Then it is returned. Uh, you know, uh, the, the person moved, left no forwarding address, because your forwarding address is only forwarded for six months. So they intentionally send you the notice. There's never any proof that you received it. And then if you don't respond, you're guilty and you have to pay. Once the baby is, once she has the baby and she's in the, at the uh, hospital and they, they ask who the, who the father is, right. if she puts her name down, you're, that's it. She, has, uh, she doesn't have to notify you. She, she, she files for child support and uh, they come looking for you. If you don't show up, you're guilty. Yeah, but that, that again, that includes, that they, they may not even look for you where you are. That's correct. She may even know where you are and intentionally not have the notice sent to where you are. That's right. And, uh, and it's completely, well, theoretically it's illegal, but you'd have to prove she knew where you were. It, it's a bad rap, and, and I'd like to challenge anyone who, who says that it is the right thing to do. Anyone who can tell me, is it the right thing to do? Take what's yours. I don't. I don't agree with that. But don't take what's not yours. Yeah. Well, Rick, I agree with you on that, and I thank you for the call. It's one eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom, Alisa, is this Alisa? Is that your name? It's Alisa. Alisa on the yes. Tom Likey Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hi. I want to say I love love your show. Thank you. And I am a woman that totally agrees with everything that you have said. Um. Actually, this is a situation that's going on with my parents. My dad is afraid to divorce my mother because when their agreement to get divorced came to pass, she decided she was going to play crazy. So now she's not working. Uh -huh. So if my dad leaves her and, you know, they can, they don't have to do much to prove that a person is mentally disabled or whatever. He's going to have to pay her through the roof. It's just unbelievable. I cannot believe that you can do that to a person. She has two kids by this man. She mm -hmm. claims to have been so in love with him. Right. But she, you know, has told me, she told me in my teenage years, if your father ever leaves me, I'm going to take him for everything that he has. And it just annoys me and upsets me. And all these women that are, you know, thinking that they have some right to somebody's money. It's just ridiculous. Well, guess what? Uh, they, they end up having the right to that money because we let them have that right. It's ridiculous. They know they can go to court and they can screw a guy permanently. It's just ridiculous. And there's no thought to how this affects your kids. You know, my brother and I have been totally screwed up because they had a screwed up marriage to begin with. They should have just called it quits when we were young, but they decided to stay together for the kids and 
It's just now to the point where my dad's totally screwed. He's making well into the six figures, and she's not making anything. And, and the best reason for not doing that is because if you stay married more than 10 years in states like California, you have to pay vagina money for the rest of your life. Right. Your yeah. dad will have to pay until she's 70, 80, 90, however long she lives, or until he's dead. Well, even when he dies, she wants his Social Security. Right. And I'm just like, you know, she thinks it's the responsibility of everyone else to take care of her. She's even said to me, well, if something happens to your father, I told her, if, straight up, if you do this to my dad, if my dad divorces you and you go for anything other than what you're entitled to, split the assets 50-50, you're entitled to that, I'll agree, whatever. But if you're going to sit up there and intentionally try to hurt my father because he left you when he should have left you, you're not a good person, I'll never talk to you. And if he just happens to die two years into paying alimony to you, you're going to be left with nothing. And she's like, well, I can get his Social Security. You're not going to help me out? And I'm like, what are you, you know, please. You've done all of this. You've worked, and then as soon as my brother turns 18, now all of a sudden you're bipolar. Yeah, how convenient. And you can't work. Unbelievable. Yeah, but you can sit in the house all day. You, she's claiming to be agoraphobic, but you can go out and do the things that you want to do. It's I, I, I totally agree with you, Lisa. I totally agree with you. Autumn on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Yes, hello. Hi. Hi. I have a, um, I've been listening to your show for the past couple of days. My friend told me about it. Of course, I've heard about you for a long time, but I was never um, interested in listening. Well, I agree with some of the things that you say, but my question is, um, do you know any nice women out there? Because I consider myself to be pretty nice. I've never had a guy buy me anything in my life, like any piece of jewelry, anything like that. I'm 29. I'm going to school. Um, I'm going to teach next year special ed, and you know, I'm getting my master's degree. I mean, what do you say to girls? Are you attractive? Huh? Are you attractive? Yes. I've had many boyfriends. Many. But none of them, you know, wanted to commit or anything. I didn't pressure them. I was, like, I think that I'm too nice. Too nice? Maybe you're too busy. Yeah. You think that might be the case? You're too busy? No. No, no, no. Not at all. You're studying for your master's degree. Huh? You're studying for your master's degree. Yeah. In, um, That's going to keep you pretty busy. Um, Not really. I also have a foster son, but I'm free pretty much all the time. How, how can you be free pretty much all the time with a foster son? Well, I have a babysitter that watches him. She also listens to your show. <laughs> oh, boy. Now, but, um, now excuse yeah, me for saying this. It sounds bizarre. You First, you have a foster son. Meaning yeah. someone is with you potentially temporarily. And, yeah. And then you then you have a babysitter to take care of. What, what's the point? No, no, no. A babysitter that takes care of him. Like if I want to go out and stuff. I know what you're talking about. Huh? I, I, know what you're t I know what you're saying. I'm just saying you took on a foster son. Then you had to hire a babysitter to take care of him. <laughs> no, I'm not. I didn't hire her. She's another foster parent. And she watches him. Um, when I go out, like, with my cousin and stuff. Mm -hmm. But I just don't understand. Like, you tell these guys, oh, screw the, you know, girls, get them, you know, don't pay for anything. I don't even ask for anything. I just ask for a guy to even hang out with me, like, at the beach or something, and all I need are losers. Well, I'll tell you what. I mean, do you know any good guys out there? What, when you say good guy, what's a good guy? I mean, are you looking to get laid, or are you looking for a husband? What are you looking for? Just a companion and eventually to get married. But um, I think these guys, you know, they've, they've been hurt before. And then they, you know, actually find a girl that is independent, and they don't like that. It's almost like they want a girl to be dependent on them so they can... Well, it isn't that. They, they don't want to wait up at night until you come home from class or work or whatever. I go to class one day a week. I'm, like, pretty much done with my master's. All right, and you have a foster son and a job. Yes, but I've only had him for, like, a month or two. All right, and you have a job. 
Yeah, I'm a sub during the day, so I'm out by three. So you're what? I'm a substitute teacher. Okay. So I'm out of work by three. All right. And do you grade papers at night or do work at home? No. No. Nope. So you're home every night. I do karaoke in the evening. <laughs> karaoke? Yeah. So you like to get drunk and sing, eh? <laughs> I drink occasionally. I know your type. And I go to church. Okay. So I try not to... Uh, do you have sex? I have had in the past, yes, but I'm trying to be good now and stay yeah. abstinent. That's going to be unmarried. A, that's going to be a problem, finding a man in this society without having sex. Not really. Sure it is. Do you think men want to date a woman who won't have sex with them? A lot of them want to date a woman that won't have sex. They think they're going to get sex, even if you tell them they're not. No. So you tell them you're saving yourself for marriage, absolutely, positively? The problem is I can't even meet anyone. You can't maybe meet anyone. A place, maybe you a can meet people there. at the bus stop. You can meet. You can't meet anyone. You can. You can meet people you don't like or not attracted to or are yeah. bad people. I mean, you can meet. You, know, you can't not meet people. <laughs> I've been to Riverside. There's plenty of people around. <sighs> not really. Oh, really? You can try the 60 freeway about two o'clock in the afternoon. At <laughs> uh, 91. I don't know. What's your advice like? I guess that's what I'm asking. Like, what would you... I mean, if I meet a guy that I like and he's been hurt before and he acts like an asshole and he listens to you, so he's like, oh, screw the bitches, screw the hoes, all that stuff. If, if he listens to me, he wants to get laid. <laughs> Not a whole of them. Oh, please. My listeners want to get laid. Well, I listen and I don't want to. I understand. I'm talking about the guys. The guys want to get laid. You get a very hard time meeting a guy who doesn't want to get laid. Well. That's going to be is. difficult. Well, I mean, why don't, doesn't your church have little church socials in the basement and stuff? Oh, it's not a basement church. It's a humongous church. No, but don't they have like a... a um, you know, yeah, but the problem multi-purpose is room old. or something where they have uh, they're all old. They're all really they're like in their forties and. Well, dear, you're 40 pushing 40 thirty 40. yourself. You know, uh, you should uh, not uh, be close to that. Huh? You're pushing thirty yourself. Yeah. I mean, uh, what that would be wrong with being with a forty-year-old guy? If you could find a forty-year-old guy who doesn't want to have sex, what would be wrong with that? In fact, if you go older, they've got sexual dysfunctions, erectile dysfunctions. I mean, they'll never ask you for sex. I want a decent-looking guy. Oh, you want a decent-looking guy. <laughs> a decent-looking, nice guy in his young. 20s or early 30s who doesn't want to have sex. How many of those do you think there are? A lot. Why aren't you meeting any of them? Because I guess it's where I live. <laughs> There is not where you live. It, where you live is the United States of America. Young, good-looking guys like to get laid because they can. And what happens when you lay them? They don't stay with you. So what's the point? Dear, that's not even necessarily true. The fact is that men will or won't call you depending on whether they like you or not. True. If a guy likes you, he won't stop calling you. True. The guys who don't call you after you've had sex with them, it's probably because you were stiff in bed. <laughs> You're laughing. I don't think so. If you were great in bed, let me tell you, most men would call back. Even if you told them you didn't want to do it again? Oh, no, not if you said you didn't want to do it again. Of course not. Hang on a second here, Autumn. Uh, Monique, what do you want to say to Autumn? Hi, Autumn. Hi. I'm wondering, do you even like sex? It sounds like you don't like sex. Um, I do, but I've made mistakes in the past, and I want to wait till I'm married. But sex isn't a mistake. Maybe you just picked the wrong person, but finding a good-looking guy in his 20s or 30s in Southern California who doesn't want... Ha want to have sex, you're completely being unrealistic. Well, I guess I don't want to compromise my faith. 
Well, sex isn't a compromise. It's enjoyable between two people. It sounds like you've had bad experiences. That are married. Uh, there's, <laughs> sex can be a compromise between married people, more so than people who aren't married. I just think you need to... I'm not putting your values down, but it sounds like, I don't know, maybe your church is teaching you that sex is bad or something, but it's very enjoyable, and it's nothing to be ashamed of. That's all I wanted to say, Tom. I love you. Thank you. Thank you, Monique. I appreciate the call. Uh, the bottom line on it is you, you, you're just not going to meet a lot of guys like that. Yeah, well, I guess what I'm saying, I just wanted to call and let you know, I mean, it's obvious that you've been hurt and burned very badly. A a any, a, you know how you can tell someone's been hurt, burned very badly? How? Cut to the quick. Uh, because he has a penis. I, We've yeah. all had our hearts stomped of on. Of course, and I have too. I just wanted to let you know that there are girls out there, and I wish that you would mention this. But dear, you, know, you see, like, you're an example. If I met a woman who was simply nice but didn't want to have sex with me, we would not have a relationship. I, well, I don't, there are many guys out there that are church-going that... You know, want to wait till marriage. Uh, dear, there are not as many as and you think. Even one Look at your church. Look at your church. Guys don't start showing up at your church until they're in their 40s. Oh, no. I go to one of the biggest churches in America, and I'm not going to plug the church or say the name of it, but there are many, many good-looking guys. I guess I'm kind of a shy person, too, or I'm not in the right places, but I basically, you know, I'm not trying to feel sorry. Don't they have any uh, social events at your church? They do all the time, but I just wanted to let you know... Why don't you go? I don't know. <laughs> you don't know. Where do you think you're going to meet these guys? <laughs> I guess I feel like God's going to drop them down from heaven. Dear, you're not, <laughs> you are not doing your part. Cindy, what did you want to say to Autumn? Hi, I just wanted to let you know that you need to go listen to Christian Radio... Obviously, I do. you have your, well, then, you know, go there and listen to the people who don't want to have sex, don't want to have a good time. First of all, you called in about something that has nothing to do with what we're calling about. What we're talking about right now is women who are taking advantage of men and basically stealing all their money. This has well, I just to wanted to let Tom know that... You know, there are women out there that don't take advantage of men and that do work their asses off like I do. And they don't want to have, have sex. And morals and values. Sounds like a lot of fun, huh, Tom? Yeah, but they don't want to have sex. Yeah, that's good. That's really good. <laughs> Imagine if I could be with a nice girl who didn't want to have sex. Well, yeah. Imagine how that's happy I'd be. I think you'd rather give the woman money than not have sex, don't you think? Well, uh, <laughs> most of us have. My goodness. Tom, have you been married before? Oh. oh, my God. Oh, boy. I, I'm, I'm sorry you are a new I listener. I listen every single day, all the I time. Need, how often do you have to listen to know how many times I've been married? I don't know. How the three times she has listening to the Tom Lika show, she'll become educated, and she'll understand exactly what happens. Oh, okay. Well, well, can, you, can you just tell me how many times you've been married? Married and divorced four times. Okay. That's all I wanted to know. I'm not judging you. I'm not saying anything bad. I basically, I know I'm kind of nervous talking on the radio. I just wanted to let you know that there are nice girls out there that do work very hard and don't expect a dime from a man. And, that's and all you know mistakes. what, Autumn? I'm Thanks. one of those But the ones who expect a dime from a man are having sex with them and they think they deserve to be comp uh, compensated for it. You know what, Tom? I originally was calling in because I wanted to tell you, you know what? I'm one of those girls, too, that works hard and earns her own money, and I'm in a relationship with somebody who's getting taken to the clean from his ex-wife. It's not a lot of fun, to be honest. Yeah, and then they're taking it out on you. Yeah, well, you know what, though? If, if the system isn't working, you need to work the system, and people need to get more creative with how to get out of this kind of stuff. Or not get into it in the first place. That's what I've been telling them. Tom, 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 Likus. Tom Likus. 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 1-800-5800-TOM. I do have to tell you that I think that your comments were extremely rude. Thank you. You're welcome. It's the Tom Likus Show. It's the Tom Likus Show at 1-800-5800-TOM. Dale on the Tom Likus Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. I was thinking of the last guy who called in. He said it was a 320000 in Beck support. Yeah. Um, 
some of these women, they be crazy. I mean, these women are making themselves more valuable dead than a lot. I'm surprised we don't hear about a lot more women tying after they file for the uh, alimony. Well, actually, we have heard of a number of homicides that have taken place uh, because of child support debates or alimony debates. Uh, actually, uh, the, we get ourselves Googled or, uh, you know, like Yahoo Alerts and Google Alerts, whatever, when these stories come up, and there are a lot of them. That's amazing. I can't believe it. Women keep going back for it. it, it, it <laughs> they're playing with their lives. I know. I, I'm amazed at that. I, I really do think that, especially when you're with a guy who uh, has a hot head or something, I really do think you're playing with fire when you start playing this game. Oh, it's amazing. All right, thanks, Tom. Take me out. Yeah, I'll take you out. 1-800-5800-TOM. It's Teresa on the Tom Likas Show. Hi, son. Hi. Hi. I just wanted to um, take my opinion. on. Um, I think it has to do a little bit with how the cultural, how where we grow up and the, how it influences, you know, our... Um, I'm from Sweden, and um, Sweden is either number one or number two on the most independent women in the world. And I never... I'm never the kind of woman that um, I'm a gold digger of any kind and um I work I don't work for my money and um if I get offered, you know, a drink or so I um um I go with water because <laughs> I don't want to feel obligated to give something back. Mm -hmm. so, um and I just think it is uh how we grow up. Um um in Sweden I guess it's a you don't. Everyone has coverage for medical, and it might be a safer type of environment to grow up. I don't know. Well, but there's, but, a, there's another angle that I have. Sweden has the highest taxes in the world. Oh, uh, second highest. Denmark is number. Oh, one. Denmark's even higher. Okay. Yeah. Bottom line, though, is that uh, a lot of the things that women depend on men for here, they get from the government. So they're not getting it directly from a man's pocket, but they are getting it from the government's pocket. And in many cases, that money came from a man's pocket. Yeah, maybe so. Well, I, I, I did separate. No wonder the women are so "quote unquote" independent. They've got a middleman who takes the money from a man and gives it to them. Well, that's well, why they well, they can say they don't need men, but they need the they government. Do pay, they do pay child support, though. Um, men over there too. <laughs> oh, then, then there you go. It's not um, very much. I would say. But how independent is anybody if they have to depend on the government for all this stuff? Well, the men do pay child support, yeah. I guess maybe that's why I don't look at it that way. I just... Um, well, you grew up with it. I'm looking at it from far away. Yeah, I, I move here. I, I, I don't think anybody's independent when the government gives them health insurance, unemployment insurance, pays people to do nothing. Well, is Sweden, no, is Sweden one of the countries that gives subsidies to artists, for example? What was that? Is Sweden one of the countries in Europe that gives subsidies to people who call themselves artists? Like they do in Holland? Uh, you know, I don't know. Yeah, sure. in Holland they do that. They, they actually, uh, some really outrageously high percentage of people in Holland uh, refer to themselves as artists because they will get payments from the government for being an artist. Mm. Mm. So yeah. how independent is anybody in a system like that? Yeah, I guess that's... Well, I guess that's why... <laughs> well, maybe not, but I have been there for 16 years now, and I feel the same. I mean, I don't... I'm independent, and I'm not looking to, you know, find someone with a lot of money, and I... And it's more for myself. I want to take care of myself and make sure I can... Be independent in case something happens. Now, in this country, most of the women who call themselves independent are either fat or ugly. Yeah, I'm not fat or ugly. I know. I'm just saying that, that in this country, that that's the way it works. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800. Tom. The Tom Likas Show. All right, send us an email. Our email address is my name. It's Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. 
Boys Night Out, don't forget, tickets available at Ticketmaster for Friday, June 17th, 8 p.m., Will Turn Theater in Los Angeles. Call 213-480-3232. Don't be a pussy. You tell your girl you're going out on the night Friday, June 17th, Boys Night Out. 213-480-3232. And if you'd like to send us a text message, you can send it to 89866. That's both T-X-Tom. 89866. 